Is this what your bass drum looks like? Are you packing this thing like you're using your drum as a box to move? If this is what your bass drum looks like and you're not getting the shell to do what it needs to do, we need to talk. This is going to be a very important video for you. Drummers, welcome to Tim Connolly Drums. As I previously mentioned in my opening statement, if this is what you're doing with your bass drum, I am here to help you. This video is vitally important to getting a good drum sound. Now, this here is a mess. I've actually got two blankets in here. I have this blanket and I got this blanket here. And for those of you that use sheets, whoops, Mr. Chuckles fell. This is Mr. Chuckles. It's my uh, dog. <laughs> he doesn't want to stay there, so unfortunately. Okay, so basically, if you're doing this with your bass drum, you're not allowing your bass drum to vibrate properly. And while that was a thing in the 70s, and this was a muffling technique, sometimes in the studio they would even drape a, another blanket or some kind of a cover in front of the bass drum to completely eliminate any vibration from the shell. Now, like I said, that was cool in the 70s, but things have definitely changed. And also for me, my personal, this is my personal taste, I want this shell to ring. I want the bass drum to be heard strong. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna show you four alternatives to having the bass drum stuffed with blankets, moving blankets, pillows, etc., etc. And I'm gonna explain why each one of them is good and how each one of them will get you the best sound. So let's get to the first one. So the first one is a simple Thing. You just take a, a normal towel, put a little painter's tape on it, and then you can sit it right inside the drum like that. Now, you can push it up against the batter head, or you can pull it away a little bit so that while it is preventing the shell from moving, it's not preventing the head from moving. That's your choice. Experiment with that to get the sound. You can also put it against the resonant head if it's on, obviously. By the way, when I am playing, I always play with a resonant head. Always, always. I never play this, again, 70s style open bass drum thing because I just, it's just not my sound. I like to get the bass drum shell to ring. And I'm gonna explain how we get the sound out of a drum, how it works, okay? After we talk about this. So you got two options here with the towel. This is really simple, cheap, easy way to do it, okay? So that's option number one. Have I used this option? Yes, I have used this option. I've used it in the studio and live, and it's fine. I prefer personally to put it right up, touching the head, you can also put some more tape on it and actually tape it to the shell of the drum if you want. Option number two, which is not the greatest option. It's an okay option. I'm not a huge fan of this option, but I have done this in the past to get that 70s and 80s funk sound, okay? So you just take a small pillow. This is not a huge, giant pillow. You put a small pillow and you just lie it right in the drum like this. And of course, as I mentioned, you're gonna put that resonant head on there so that the drum vibrates properly. Now, if you wanna muffle this more and even dampen it more to create that real funkadelic funk sound, you wanna actually take that pillow and push it right up against the head of the drum. Okay, now that's really going to dampen the sound. This is the furthest that I'll dampen or the hardest that I'll dampen the drum 
when I'm playing. I will not use a giant pillow or any of these blankets or anything like that. I will not do any of that. This pillow is as extreme as I'll go. Now the other option, as I mentioned, is sitting it up against the resonant head as well. So you do have options when using this pillow. You can again take some painter's tape and tape the pillow in if you want. I personally don't do any of that because I don't want any damage or any residue from the tape or whatever um, on the drum. Even though painter's tape is probably your best choice because it shouldn't leave residue um, because you know painters use it for walls. So, But those are some options. And you can vary the degree. You can put it right up against the head. You can half the head you know, just a little bit on the head or not touching the head at all. You got lots of options with the pillow. All right, so now we have some other pillow options. Now I got two pillows here. This is made by DW. These are DW pillows. They come with Velcro and you can take this Velcro here and you can put it on the inside of your bass drum and you can then put that down there like that anywhere positioned in there like that tape it down secure it down then this pillow sits on top of it and it sits in there like that now like i said previously you can position these pillows any way you want you can position it so it's tight right up against the head like actually pushed up against the head if you put some tape on it or you can just loosen it off like that so that it's not really heavily against the head. You can lay it down like this so that it just barely touches the head. Another option, and the reason I have two of these is, you can double this up and put this one on the resonant head. Like that. So you got two pillows. So now both heads are dampened. This is another alternative to using that pillow that I just showed you. This one I like. I really like this option. I've used this option in the studio and live, and these pillows from DW are fantastic. I've done this double option, and I've also done the single option. I've never done the option where it's just resonant head. I almost always muffle a little bit of the front head. Okay, so that's the DW pillow option. I know Evans make these as well they do a slightly different version of this. Um, I've had these pillows for a while. And uh, like I said, they work great. My favorite is to put it just like that live. And it sounds fantastic. And of course, with the resonant head on, I never leave the bass drum exposed like this. Okay. And the last one that I use Whoa, wait a second, what is he doing in there? What in tarnation? <laughs> Mr. Chuckles is in the bass drum. <laughs> okay, so the last one that I use, and I use this the most, this is my go-to form of muffling the bass drum. Basically, Evans EMAD bass drum head. Now this is a 20 inch bass, I forgot to mention that earlier, it's a 20 inch recording custom bass drum. And you can have zero padding inside of it, like this little ring here. Or you can have this large ring, which is what I'm currently using. You can also get a smaller ring. It comes with um, two rings. So you can get a large and a small ring for this. A little bit of problem here getting this back in. Once it goes in, it'll be fine. It's just getting there. There we go. And as you can see, it sits perfectly tight against the head and this is what I prefer now like I said you can get a, a foam that's a little bit smaller and when you're using this the drum really sounds great really sounds great this is my bass here I use this a lot in the studio I use this exclusively live now I discovered this head a while ago and I love it this is my definite go-to the Evans EMAD this is a 20. You can get this in a 22 or an 18. This is an 18 down there. I got this head on that bass drum down there. So what I'm going to do uh, shortly is with this drum kit, because it's already set up 
and it has this head on it. I'm going to let you hear what this head sounds like because this is my go-to. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is how do we get a good sound out of the bass drum after we've applied all this muffling. Now, obviously, tuning does factor in, but I want to explain how the sound works, how the drum creates the sound, because most people think that it's just hitting the batter head, it's all about the batter head, and it's nothing else. Furthest thing from the truth. These lugs factor in, the tuning lugs, the rim factors in, the shell, and the type of wood that we're using factors in. These are maple shells, these are birch shells. You're gonna get a different sound out of the drum, whether you're using oak, maple, birch, um, whatever type of wood. I think there's some plastic drums too that the Fibes puts out those plastic drums that John Bonham used to use. You're gonna get a totally different sound from that as well. So when you hit this head, what happens is <clears throat> the drum vibrates. How much tension you have the lugs at determines how much the head is going to vibrate. So if you've got those rods tensioned way back, the head vibrates a lot, the shell vibrates a lot, and you're going to have a, a bottom end. Ultimately, for my sound, I do like a nice low end bass, but I like the bass to have controlled ring. So bottom, 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 I don't like to do personally. So I have my bass drum actually not tight, not jazz tight, but a little bit tighter, maybe a turn up from the knot, from the bottom of having this completely <laughs> loosened off, okay? So once you turn it up like I do, it controls how much ring is gonna take place in the shell. Then on the front head, the resonant head, what's happening there is the note is hit here and then the note is going to come out the other end the resonant head is actually the head that determines what the note is going to be is the note going to be the same as this if they're the same tension then they're going to be the same if the note is or the lugs are tuned higher on the front the note is going to come out with a pitch bend it's going to start low and it's going to go high so it's going to go right now that's not exactly the bass drum sound but you get the idea of the pitch bending now if the lugs are tight here and lower here you're going to get um, um, high to low and like i said earlier if they're both tensioned at the same you're just going to get a flat um, sound right now of course i'm not creating the sounds correctly as you can hear but you're going to get that thud that you want boom boom Okay, so I'm going to do a separate video on tuning, but I do want to mention one more thing about the tuning, and that is <clears throat> this right here. This is the drum dial, and this is what I use to tune my drums. I used to always tune by ear and was very successful. Then I discovered this tool. Like I said, I'm going to do a separate video on this tool. It's a fantastic thing for tuning your drums. You just sit it right on the drum head and you decide based on how tight the rods are, how tight you want it. And you can get every single lug to be exactly the same. And you just have to set it so that it's perfectly set up at zero, which this one is. And then when you sit it on the drum, it will tell you what the tension is of each one of these individual lugs and then of course you balance it out so that all the lugs are the same the beauty of this is if you want what i was talking about where the pitch drops from the resonant head the pitch stays the same or the pitch rises from the resonant head in particular you can perfectly tune each one of these to get that to happen a drop the same or a rise and of course you can do the same thing with the batter head as well you can get the batter head to be tensioned perfectly evenly evenly now this takes a little bit more time but i highly recommend the drum dial 
to get this tuning right. Now, I'm not being paid by drum dial. I'm not being paid by Yamaha drums or Evans heads or anybody. I'm just doing this because I want to help drummers out there understand how the bass drum works, how to get the best sound out of it, and what we should be doing to get the best sound, and also how the sound that I like in the studio and live, okay? So the drum dial can't go wrong. Okay, now I got another one of those rings I was telling you about. This is for a bigger, this is actually the smaller one. This is the bigger one that sits in here. And as you can see, it's, um, it's actually for this drum here, but you can see that it's a bigger piece of foam. So if you want to dampen the drum down even a little bit further, you're going to use this bigger piece of foam. So that is uh, the way that this particular EMAD head comes. It comes with this um, plastic thing here and you can put different size foams. It only comes with two even though I think there's a small one as well that you can buy separately. <clears throat> okay, drummers, I hope that I helped you today understand a little bit more of how to get the best sound out of your bass drum. I'm just gonna play a tiny little bit on this drum so you can hear what this, uh, what this um, EMAD head sounds like, but on an 18 inch bass drum. Let's get to it and then I will see you next time Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the sound of this drum, and I will catch you on the next video. Keep drumming.